Do you hear me all right? Because I didn't hear, didn't sound like it was working over onto the side. Okay, good. Um, we have our announcements in the bulletin. Um, a reminder that we are having the um, Bluegrass Gospel Concert to, uh, this afternoon with Mark Brinkman. Uh, he goes by Brink, by the way, if you're speaking with him. And um, we, it's a blessing that I, I I think it was, did we decide on 85 tickets? 75. 75, okay. So we made 75 tickets so that we could have the chairs spread out in the, in the fellowship hall. And all of the tickets uh, have been spoken for. And so I've had a few returned. I have a few What's that? I have had a few returned and okay. I gave them to Art this morning. Three returned and you gave them to Art. Art, he'll have them at the door if anybody wants to come in. Okay. And um, so that's kind of good news. And... Um, There's other things that are there, but are there any other announcements that we need to lift up? Yes, ma'am. I have two. Um, first one is the uh, Christmas cards. If you have cards back there for everybody to please take their cards, spread the word around to those that aren't here because after next Sunday, they're going to go to the fire barrel. And the box will be put away till next year. Okay. And the other is... You said um, they're going to go to where? Fire barrel will get burned. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're not saving them. Um, the other one was, please remember to sign your red books with your attendance. This helps me to track for the conference of how many members and people we have visiting the church. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, are we going to tear them up and put them in the offering? Or? That would be helpful, but I check the books every Sunday just to be sure yeah. nobody left one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other announcements? Um, so this is the first time that we did not start uh, the contemporary, well not contemporary, the uh, drive-in church service over there because it was raining. Um, the, the heavy rain had stopped, but it was still drizzling, so we just moved over here and we're in the fellowship hall. It was a, a much lighter crowd. I think some folks just didn't come out. 
But uh, I think uh, we've got a couple of people over here this time because uh, they decided they'd come and worship inside uh, for the second service. Um, there was something I wanted to ask y'all. I hope it'll come back to me. We do have the prayer request uh, sheets there, but I think before we get to that part, um, I'd like to go ahead and, and ask a couple of people, let you know that uh, uh, Barbara Berg uh, has come through her procedure for the uh, heart irregularities that she was suffering, and that went well. Uh, but she again was, uh, they realized that she's again anemic and and there's indication that she had some internal bleeding that they didn't know what it was. Um, I did get news today that they had uh, went back in and found that there was a vessel, blood vessel that had been nicked. And so this time, that was what it was. Not knowing what it was previously, but uh, they, so she, as far as the phone call to her yesterday, she was still in the hospital yesterday. But I think the new news about figuring out what it was and having gone back in probably came since my phone call, if I'm getting that clear. So keep Barbara in your prayers. She's not uh, in the clear yet. But uh, at least now it seems that they figured out what was the matter and have been able to, to deal with that. And some good news is that the doctors figured out what was the matter for Nancy, and um, they've been able to deal with it, and she's so much better that she's here with us. She's not completely out of the woods, as they say, but, um, and so would appreciate your continued prayers, but she is so much better now, and uh, being able to find out what made her so sick is helpful, being able to find out what was giving the discomfort that seemed like a heart attack it was not a heart attack. They figured it out and can do something about it. So uh, we praise God for that progress. Yes? Since you're giving good news about health, uh, I got a call from Julie Daniel yesterday and Patty Daniel Hoy, who used to be our secretary for a while and went here for many years. Uh, she's doing much better and should go home within a day or two. That's good news. Good. Okay. And so, Jerry, I understand that you've been in and out of the doctors, and how are things going? I'm glad that you're doing better. Oh, well, thank you. They're going very well. We went to the, a very good neurologist in Tampa, and he has identified the issues, and we're on the path to recovery. Very good. Very good. We still need lots of prayer on this, though, because he, he was in the hospital for days, and they did nothing, and God opened the door with the neurologist that he went to and got an MRI. And he called USF, can you believe this? Mm -hmm. And said, he called in a favor mm -hmm. and asked if Jerry come over for an MRI. Do you know what a miracle that is? Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, Ed, I'd love to stay extra and do that for you. I can hear her on the phone. <laughs> and so he got that MRI, and that's how we found out he had an acute mini stroke. And um, Dr. Grant put his call first a week with more tests and a treatment plan. Is doing great. So, hallelujah to that because the hospital didn't even do an MRI. Mm -hmm. So the 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 great news is that uh, God God worked through those individuals to be able to get an answer, and now there's uh, there's knowledge of what to do about it, and so that's good news. Yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> okay. Any other praises? Any other? Good news. Well, I've got another one. Yes. So, Jeanette, and I ask you to pray for that mm -hmm. have, you know, all those people living in her house and everything. Um, they finally moved out. But we still need to lift Jeanette up in prayer. And that's a miracle that Delphine and her family are gone. However, now the woman that she opened her house up to is bad mouthing her to other friends <laughs> and making up lies about her. So, the devil's just trying to. Um, my friend Jeanette is a recuperated alcoholic and crack person. I don't know what to call them. Yeah, but she was on crack. And um, it's, her healing with God's help has been miraculous. 
And I can just see the devil trying to pull her down the drain. And let's not let that happen. Let's lift her up in prayer and just keep him away from her. Um, she signed up to go back to school. She, she was the drum major of her high school, Hernando High School, in Val Victorian. She's a gifted, gorgeous young woman. The guy with the wrong people. I just, I, just, I hope you'll join me in refusing to let the devil have her back. Now, would you, would you pacing this way, just remind me the lady's name that we're going to be praying for? Jeanette. Jeanette, okay. We keep Jeanette in prayers. And, and Alice, I wanted to, to have an update on how Lynn is doing. I was just fixing to put him back on, but he is still having really bad headaches every day, constantly. And one doctor tells him, don't take ibuprofen. The other one says, don't take Tylenol. <laughs> so what is he supposed to take? And they haven't done any tests. They keep changing his medicine, um, or they keep raising it, you know, either way. And it's not working. And I'm just hoping that he can go and they'll do some kind of test to figure out what's causing he, You know, because he's really particular on what he eats and everything. pressure and uh, bad headaches and two different doctors saying don't take the headache medicine of that one or this one so uh, yeah we'll, we'll keep them in prayer God will give them the guidance that they need and, and, uh, and bring some conclusion putting my um, sister-in-law uh, Iris McFarland on uh, she went to the hospital Monday having trouble swallowing again she's in her 90s and about the same time last year, she was in the hospital and couldn't s swallow. And they, she kept saying there's something stuck in her throat. And what it is is her throat has swelled up. And so no matter what, she even drinking. And she eats like a bird. They're lucky they can get her to eat anything. She says, I'm not hungry, I'm not eating. And what's her first name? Iris. Iris. Let, let's call for, uh, pray for Iris in that. And I'll lift up a praise that uh, our daughter, Shannon, um, who had no symptoms when Valerie and I got COVID uh, a year and a half ago in June uh, and went through most of our extended family. Well, I'm going to say about half didn't get it the first time, uh, even though we'd all been together. And Shannon, our 17-year-old now, um, did have a mild fever, so we kept her home from school. And then the fever broke, and she was feeling fine after the, the weekend, so she went back to school. And then um, and we figured it was a cold virus, you know. Uh, and then, the, uh, then she started having a cough, so she stayed home from school another day and decided that she wanted to go ahead and get tested. Because if she didn't have COVID, she was just going to go to school, take cough medicine, that kind of thing. She got tested and was positive. So uh, Shannon tested positive this time. I'm sure that she was exposed and her body just killed the germs before, and that's why people are asymptomatic. If the first line of defense kills the germs, then they don't get fevers and things like that. Um, but she got over it very quickly, and I praise God for that. Um, a concern is that last night, Valerie started not feeling so well and had a cough. Um, I don't have a fever, and she doesn't have a fever, um, but she does have a cough. And so I was asked if she's going to get tested, and I said, so I don't know, but uh, we may do that. But for now, she's just going to stay away from people. And I brought, I brought this out of my pocket. A dear lady who met, made a, 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 a Florida State University one of these. I liked it so much, she made one for me that was orange and blue. Uh, uh, somebody here in the church, very nice to do that. Um, and so I have it out so that I can remember 
that when I'm not far away from you, I'll, I'll put this on, just in case. Uh, because we know we can carry germs even if we're not sick. And so I'll be, uh, if, you, if I come walking down there without it, y'all remind me, don't feel self-conscious about it. Um, all right, so let's uh, continue on with, uh, with prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that as we are here to worship you, that you would open up our eyes and our ears, that we would hear you speak to us. Open our hearts and, and, and make them soft and pliable, that we would not suffer from a hardness of heart that keeps us from understanding your will for us. Lord, we've lifted up some concerns and some prayers here from the group, and uh, we may address some more that have been written down and not spoken out in our later part of the service, but we, we thank you, Father, that you, you meet us here, and in fact, you will meet us anywhere, even when there's just two or three of us or when we are alone and seeking our Heavenly Father, when we need our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when we need to be uplifted and empowered by your Holy Spirit, that you are there and you are ready to, to uh, interact with us. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus, for it is because of his blood, your blood, Jesus, that we are able to have an audience with the Almighty God, that we are able to call him our Heavenly Father. And Father, uh, we are grateful that, you, that uh, through Jesus you let us know that you would make available to us your Holy Spirit if we would but turn to you, surrender ourselves, our wills to your will, uh, and that we might receive your Holy Spirit to empower us to live a life uh, with victory over sin. And so as we worship you, Father, we, we pray that you would so work in our minds and our hearts that uh, we, would, we would grow in the fullness of your Spirit. And that you would better prepare us not only for our, uh, uh, our life leading to holiness, but that you would prepare us also to be a part of, of your light, a light into the world, that others who are in darkness may see your light and come out of the darkness. And we pray that you would so work your miracles in us and through us that uh, we would be a part of your miracle for others. I pray these things in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our first reading of scripture this morning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31 is first, and then chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work that he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent the rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But the streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man that he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I invite you to join with me in the affirmation of faith found entitled The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to turn to hymn number 254, We Three Kings. sits on the table here. 
uh, but we'll have to give some thought. We have a whole year to figure out how we would, might like to do it and how we might like to use it, uh, but an additional nativity scene. Uh, so, thought I would share that with you. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Well, um, I'm so glad to be back, and thank you so much for your prayers and your concerns, and to my special friend, Fred, Fred of the Healing Toasted Brown Bread, and it's a whole story in itself. Um, this is a special time in our service when we, when we take up our offering and, and we give a little back to the Lord, uh, such a little we give, because He gives us so much. Um, I also thought that, um, did you wonder why we're singing We Three Kings this morning? Well, they came, but now they have to go back to their land. And so that symbolically was what I was telling you by choosing that hymn for this morning. So I'm going to read a little epiphany reading from page 255 while you all are taking up the collection. And this says, O oh God, you made of one blood all nations, and by a star in the east reveal to all peoples him whose name is Emmanuel. Enable us who know your presence with us, and we do, don't we? So to proclaim his unsearchable riches, that all may come to his light and bow before the brightness of his rising, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And I wanted to say that in, the, in your hymnal, you're going to find our middle hymns uh, as a trio, because I couldn't choose one over the other. And you may not be familiar with the spirit song. So even if you just listen to it today, read the words. And it's a new year, and these words are just up very appropriate, and they're lovely. Thanks. stand. And we're going to sing our doxology at the end of the service today. Oh, okay. We're going to, yes. We're going to sing the doxology at the end of the service today. So if you would bring the offering plate up, and you may be seated. <laughs> <laughs> we had talked about it previously uh, before... Nancy had her time of being away with illness, so, but I wasn't remembering. Father, we thank you for this blessing of prayer, and we continue to pray for Barbara as uh, she had been readmitted, readmitted at Bayonet Point uh, for uh, her continued problems. We thank you, Lord, that apparently they finally have discovered uh, what is the current need and is taking care of that. We thank you, Lord, that... Uh, uh, Iris, no, we thank you, Lord, for the ability for us to be able to pray for Iris because of her swallowing issues and for Lynn uh, because of his terrible headaches. We do ask, Lord, that you would uh, provide what they need and guide and direct doctors, and if necessary, that you would just miraculously heal where the need is. We lift up Julie Matthews because of cancer. And uh, we're grateful that Patty Daniel Hout is feeling better and uh, will be going home soon. <clears throat> and we lift up the family of Dolores Lewis, suffering from a massive stroke. Uh, and we ask the Lord for uh, your care for all of that family, uh, for she is not expected to recover. 
Father, I thank you for how you have delivered us from so many things over these past years and then throughout our lives. We thank you that you are with us during the hardships and, and uh, crises in our lives that, uh, that don't get better. And yet, yet your, your, your grace, the, the power, the, the, uh, the strength that you give us is sufficient for us. And so we ask the Lord that uh, in these things and others that are upon our hearts, family members who are sick, uh, uncertainties of from one day to the next of uh, what the brokenness of this world will bring. But we can always know that you are consistent. You are the one thing that is consistent. When others, people fail us, when our health fails us, when uh, the, the situations in our culture and our society uh, fail us, that you never fail us and that you remain consistent. And we thank you, Father, for this relationship in Jesus Christ that lets us not only know you, but experience you in our lives. And so strengthen us with a resolve, Lord, that we who call ourselves by the name of Jesus Christ will uh, so live our lives that we will be instruments of your love, mercy, and grace in the world around us, that others might come to you seeking your forgiveness and seeking wholeness that can come only in Christ. We pray these things knowing your love for us through your word and the value of your word in strengthening our lives. And we ask that you would uplift us in our worship and that you would guide us in our ministry throughout the coming weeks. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Do we want to sing it or speak it today? I think we'll speak it today and next week we're going to start singing. Okay. So today we'll speak it, next week we'll start singing again. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive others who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Please stand the same.
uh, with you and less separated from you. But today I'm going to be here because I want to I use this song, the Spirit song, at the end. And if I leave the book up here, I won't remember. <clears throat> There's a lot of parallel in John's gospel to the uh, account of God's creation of the world. It's uh, very uh, apparent even in a poetic sense and with the words in which John begins his gospel and how it is so similar to the words of Genesis and its beginning. Um, and throughout, there, there can be parallels that are found. Um, I like very much the way that the uh, recent television series that you can find actually for free on uh, various uh, ways of using Roku or a fire stick. Uh, you can find it on YouTube and other places. You can, you can find it for pay as well or find it with commercials interrupting. But there is an app that you can get and, uh, and use that app in order to be able to watch it and have it uh, to, to pull up and put on the TV. Uh, Valerie and I found, I, I knew I wouldn't be techno uh, knowledgeable enough to make it work right uh, and uh, I really thought Valerie would and she would seem to get almost there and it would start and then kick off so I don't know why. But uh, one of our church members had given me uh, a DVD that has the first season on it. And it's funny because I had people telling me about the, the, uh, the Chosen. Several people had told me about The Chosen, have you watched it? And early on, one of the church members handed me the DVD, but I wasn't putting it in my, you know, connecting the two until after I'd watched about three episodes with commercials. Uh, and then I thought, that face is familiar. The face that is Peter, the disciple's face. That face is familiar. And then I realized that right in front of our TV on the table was a DVD cover that had his face on it, and it said The Chosen. You know how something's right in front of your face and you don't, don't see it anymore? And so I was like, we don't have to do the commercials. We've got the DVD right here. So binge watched all of it on that. For Christmas, Valerie gave me season two. And so I've got season one and season two. And, and I think, uh, actually, I, I, I came to find out another little God thing. There are other parts that were made before they did the television series. Um, like there was a special that dealt with Christmas. They just recently came out with um, a movie version that I did not get to, and I'm told that it used some Christmas hymns and, and, the, and the Jesus story. But there's, uh, if you search and find The Chosen, uh, there's one episode that's called Messengers, or that maybe The Messengers, and that one is about Jesus' birth. And it jumps kind of back and forth in time, but it was wonderful. I, I watched it after we got back from our vacation after Christmas, and I thought, oh, if I'd have only seen this, it recorded while we were away. If I had only seen this before Christmas Eve, I would have changed it all, and we would have watched it for our Christmas Eve service. Um, but uh, maybe, maybe we'll do that as a special thing then. But The Chosen... Um, there's an episode in season two where John, who you've gotten to know pretty well during season one, is there sitting with his mother, and it's some years later, and he's working on trying to write down everything that we remember, he remembered, and what others could remember about Jesus' ministry, his life, his teachings. And, uh, and I remembered that during the first season, when things were happening, he always seemed to be there watching and writing notes. And Jesus would say something, and he'd pull out and, and writing notes. And, uh, and so I had figured out in season one, oh, he's preparing for the gospel. But he's sitting there, and he'd been writing and, and such, and he's talking with his mother, and he says, I, I'm trying to, I, I've got so much, and I'm 
putting it together and I'm trying to figure out how to begin it, how to begin the story. And uh, his mother said, well, uh, well, what came before Jesus? And he said, well, before Jesus, well, we had Moses. Well, before Moses, what was before Moses? Noah was before Moses. Well, what was before Noah? And so he kind of lit up and he started reciting the first chapter of Genesis. And he starts, uh, he said, but just from memory, uh, that was something they did in those days is they learned whole books of the Bible by memory. And he said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. No, I'm reading from John. Excuse me. Like I said, they're so similar. similar. Switch papers. John said this. God... Oh, here it is. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And then in the show, they kind of went back and forth of the words from Genesis and the words that John was writing down for the beginning of the Gospel of Genesis. And so, if you look at them, you can see, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so John wrote, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And then it says, now the heaven, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And, it, and in Genesis it says, he was with God in the beginning. And then uh, he goes on to say, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And then through him all things were made. And you could see as you go back and forth, and in fact, as it was being said in the video, the rhythm was poetically a copy back and forth. And I liked very much how that was represented. I had been told in seminary, and we had looked at how that, that you had those patterns in Genesis by what the words said, and then the patterns of what John wrote about Jesus, that... that uh, makes the statement that Jesus is the Word of God. So John is saying, in the beginning was the Word. And in Genesis, it was saying, in the beginning, God created. And John says, through Him all things were made. And God said, let there be light. And in John he says, the true light, no, the, uh, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And with this parallel, we have this experience of John tying in that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus was the Word, he was with God and, God, and the Word was God. And so what we find is, that what, that's why we talk about it today, that Jesus is the living Word of God. We have the written Word of God in the Scriptures. We have the living Word of God in Jesus Christ. take a moment to find my rhythm because I'm, I'm not quite on it the way I was in the first service. Let me just pause a moment. So 
So in Genesis, when God said, and let there be light, there was light. And God separated the light from the darkness. And in Jesus, we're told that the light of all mankind and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness was not, has not overcome it. You remember when Jesus, I mean, in Genesis, when the first thing that God created was light. He spoke it into existence. But it's not until several days later, near the end of the week, that God put the uh, sun and the moon and the stars in the heavens. Now we know that our light is regulated day from night, day from night, because of the rotation of the earth and when the sunlight shines on the earth. And in the Genesis story, it says that God put the lights in the heavens in order to, to regulate things. And, but how is it that there was light several of those creation days before there was the sun created? John is saying that that light is the Son of God, that that light comes from God. God spoke light into existence, and then he puts the sun and the moon and the stars in the heavens to regulate that. We didn't even have the time of a 24-hour day until God put the sun in the sky. And so in Genesis, when talking about uh, on the first day God spoke this, on the second day God spoke that, the third day spoke something else into being, and as he goes through this, this account, we're not talking about 24-hour days. Of course, God could have done it in 24 hours, but that wasn't even applicable because there was no sun in the sky for the, for, uh, to, to be the source of the light. The source of the light was God himself. And in this, in this account, we're finding that God is the source of light in our spiritual life as well. Not just in the physical world, but in the spiritual aspect of one's life. God is the source of, of light. God makes a lot of distinctions in the way that Genesis is presented to us, where things are distinguished as different. The day and night, light and dark, good and evil, this in there. Uh, God created man and he created them man and woman, there's distinctions of things being different from each other. And uh, throughout the first five books of the Bible, which we call the Torah, we have those distinctions that help us to be able to, uh, to know the difference between what God calls good and what God calls evil, that everything's not just the same. And in verse 9... John wrote, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. Now, one might look at the language there and see that it says that he was coming into the world and then immediately says he was in the world. Now, how? which is it? Does it have to be one or the other, right? Well, no, it can be both because he had already entered into the world and he is continuing to come into the world even still today. Jesus came physically the first time as a little baby and was born into the world. I think I may know why I didn't have my rhythm because I really intended to start with the title. And this is the question that I was going to start with. How much does God love you? That's why, because this page should have been over here. How much does God love you? <clears throat> God loved you, first of all, God loves you, God loves mankind so much that he created all that is. He created this world. Uh, he separated light from darkness so we could have light and dark. <clears throat> if we didn't have darkness... <clears throat> I was thinking I was having a miracle today that my throat didn't have to be cleared once and all of that singing that we did. I'm glad I didn't say anything before now. 
as I thought, I'll wait and see if I get all the way through the whole service. So, in everything in the creation story of Genesis, we see that God created the world and the sun and the moon and the stars and all that is for mankind, for a place to put his creation of man and woman, a place for you to be born into. And it was a place that was good, it was good, it was good, over and over again, and then God placed Adam and Eve into, uh, placed man, man and woman, he made them into the garden, into this world that's regulated by the, the, the heat from the sun, the energy from the sun, the light from the sun and the moon, and the stars, and everything that God put into place, it was so that we would have a, a, uh, an ecosystem in which we could live. Recently watching some of the nature shows that I love to watch and um, I always have to do it with a critical mind because there are those things where what the, the statement that's being made is as, as if things just happened on their own and yet in those shows when you see all of the intricacies of what is it makes a case for it couldn't possibly have just happened on its own. The distance that the moon is from the, from the earth and the distance that the earth and the moon are from the sun are exactly the right amount for us to have the atmosphere that we have. And if it was any different, we wouldn't have the atmosphere that we have. Uh, and, and so God created this. God, How much does God love you? God created this wonderful place for us. God also, how much does he love us? He loved us enough to give us the option to follow in his way and told us, follow in my way and everything will remain great. Veer from my way and things won't be so great. And we know from the account that Adam and Eve ended up deciding to veer from God's way and try to launch on their own because of the promise that if they did eat from the tree of knowledge, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that they would be like God, knowing both good and evil. <clears throat> In seminary, I learned that a lot of uh, theologians, well, a lot of them think one way and a lot of them think another way. But there are theologians who believe that, that the Genesis chapter 1 is one creation story from one culture. And Gen Genesis chapter 2 is another creation story from another culture and that the Hebrew people just put them together. But when we, uh, Dennis Prager in his, uh, what is it called, the Rational Bible Commentary, uh, shows the, the characteristics of the two and their dependency upon each other that, uh, and, and using the, the Hebrew language itself, points out that they have to be one creation story and came from the same source. And there's evidences in that. Um, one of the main things is, is that you look and see that Genesis chapter 1 is a general story about God's creation of everything. And then Genesis chapter 2, and that's why we put verse 31 in there. Um, God saw all that he had made and it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. And so that is the tie between the two stories. You go on, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. And by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Now, there's a whole sermon on that one passage there. But there, here's, here's, our lead, here's our key. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now, no shrub yet appeared on the earth, and no plant yet sprung up from the Lord God. And not, uh, God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground, but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. I'm going to skip forward now. 
And, and it says, uh, well, no, I'm there. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. See, we're getting the specific details, the, the intimacy of God creating man and woman. In chapter 1, God created man. Male and female, he created them. Not a whole lot about man. That's the general picture of the, of the uh, chronology of God creating. But this jumps in onto the sixth day and goes into the seventh day. And it's like saying, now let me tell you about his most special creation. And God gives the details about cre creating them. <clears throat> forming man from the dust of the earth and breathing life into him. <clears throat> How much does God love us? God loves us enough to give us this intimate detail of the relationship of creation. Before giving us the story of the brokenness of that relationship. So that we have a better sense of what was lost. When you read in Genesis uh, for your, your own uh, spiritual uplifting. Read it with that in mind. Read that. Uh, read it with that remembrance that this is a story of that intimate relationship that God offers. Now, as we go back to John, we see that the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world, and he was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, that intimate relationship. But his own did not receive him. So like in the story of Genesis where God had created this beautiful universe for Adam and Eve and for them to have children and to, to, uh, to cover the earth, populate the earth, um, the, the decision to turn away from God. And, and in that story, when God comes into the garden, Adam, Eve, where are you? We're told that when God came and came into the garden, it's, it's along the lines of as, as was his, his practice in the cool of the evening when God would come in and hang out with Adam and Eve. And they were hiding. And they had covered themselves with, uh, with the leaves camouflaging themselves and hiding from God, hiding from each other. And we see the brokenness that takes place. But the story of the gospel, the story that John is saying, is that though with God, Adam and Eve had not received him, today, or in, in John's day, in Jesus' day, Jesus was not received. In verse 12, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in him, in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We still have a lot of people in our culture, in the world, who think of God as an angry and vindictive God. One that's just waiting and ready to reach out and strike us, to send us to hell. And you can't <clears throat> blame them for thinking that. Um, when we who profess God might seem to sometimes be harping on this vengeful sort of God, ready to send us all to hell. But when we look at the gospel, we see that, yes, though there is the warning that we are on a path to death, a path to destruction, a path to eternal separation from God, that the proclamation is that we can turn around and we can be on the path that leads to righteousness, the path that leads to eternity with God. That was the message that John the baptizer preached. Turn around and obey. That was the message that Jesus preached throughout his ministry. Turn around, repent, and obey the way of God. He also preached that God was there to help, him, to help us. So rather than it being that God came into the world to, or that, that, that the Son of God came into the world to condemn sinners, as I preached, I think, just last Sunday, 
He came into the world to save sinners. And John is presenting that same message. He gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of husband's will, but born of God. And that's the good news that we have to take out there. The good news is we all can recognize we have some brokenness in our lives. There's some darkness in our lives. There's some things that are not going the way that we want them to. And if right now everything seems to be going our way, there will come a point in time when it's not. And the good news is that we can turn away from that brokenness if we will just receive him. And he will give us the right to become children of God. See, when we ran away from God, we were no longer children of God. But he gives us the opportunity to come running back to him. In verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace. Grace being power. Power to reshape our lives. Full of grace and truth. There is a truth. There is one truth, and it's God's truth. And he makes it available to any of us, to all of us, if we would but receive him. How much does God love you? He became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He suffered what it was to grow up a child. He suffered the illness and the brokenness of this world. He suffered when his father died before he began his ministry. He suffered when he saw the suffering of others and in his empathy he healed. He set people free from demons and then called them to repentance and obedience. How much does God love you? He loves you enough to give you the truth. He loves you enough to give you the way. He loves you enough to come and dwell among us and to die on a cross for us. <clears throat> and he loves us enough that he was raised from the dead to show us that he can raise us out of sin and death. So you've got good news. We don't have to condemn. We can let the Holy Spirit condemn. We can share the good news of what God offers. We don't necessarily have to figure out what somebody's weakness in sin is. We can just talk about there's a weakness in sin and they'll think of what it is. But then you can tell them there's a strength in God to rescue us from that weakness, to rescue us from that sense of being a slave to something in this world. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. And in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When Adam and Eve took from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they lost the right to be able to reach and eat from the tree of life. But God offers us life. Will we take, reach out and take it? And will we reach out and offer it to others? Amen. Our last sin, hymn is one that you know well. Can we sing 347, the Spirit song, again, is our last song? Okay. And rather than the... Yes. Okay. Yes. We can do that. I love this song. This was one... Oh, you know what? I'm glad you said that. We'll, we'll sing it. But let me read it to you this way. This is how I was going to conclude. In that, there's two verses. If we read the first... I'm going to read the first two and a half verse of, uh, lines of the first verse, and I'm going to immediately switch to the last two and a half lines of the second verse. 347. Okay? So listen to this. Um, yeah, that's on 347. 
Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with his spirit and his love. Let him fill your hearts and satisfy your soul. Oh, give him all your tears and sadness. Give him all your years of pain. And you'll enter into life in Jesus' name. Now, this little song was one that we loved singing when I was in junior high and high school. Our youth group. And we... It was one of the ones we'd sing when we'd go to the beach and somebody would have a guitar at night after youth and, and have, what do they call it, afterglow. But we just get permission, oh, can we all go down to the beach? And, and our parents would say, yeah, as long as you all stay together. And, and um, a lot of us often had tears as we sang these songs because we knew it was words to us. You know, that we could give all this. Do you remember junior high and high school? There was a lot of pain in those years. And this, these, oh, I had a lot of fun too. But there was a lot of pain in those years. These words spoke so much to us then. So we'll sing, sing this song. Please stand. Three, four, seven. people who experience are experiencing Jesus and and not understanding what what's going on and then they realize God's love for them in spite of their sin in spite of their brokenness and that's that's what that song is singing about 
And that's the message that you have available to you. Um, read the scriptures and pray and practice telling the stories, telling your story. I mean, when you think about how long you've stayed married to the person that you love next to you, or that uh, you loved and has passed away, you know, when you, when you think about the difference that God has made in your life, and it's a miracle. It's a miracle that Valerie was interested in going out with me on the date in the first time. It's a miracle that she's still married to me. You know? And you know what that's like. So you have good news. You have great news. Find individuals to share with. And little by little, they'll, they'll want more. And at some point, you can say, well, come and join me for the prayer gathering we have. Or come and join me for the Sunday school class that we have. You might not be going to one right now, but you, you know there's one over there and there's one over here. And you can invite somebody to it and you'll have some help. And you show up. Uh, or come and join with me in church to hear the word of God and to sing those prayers that we sing. See what God does for you. Amen. Amen. I'll meet you at the door.